We've talked about databases in general, but let's talk about relational databases. What does it mean to be a relational database? Off we go, finding out the truth. What is a relational database? It's kind of what it sounds like. It's just a database, which is a whole bunch of data that we have, and the data all relates to each other in some way. So an example is if you're storing information about houses or people and where they live, then you would have the names of everyone and the addresses of everything. And they're all kind of related together. Like there's a relationship between a person and then their address. They live there. That's the relationship. So if you're trying to store this information, then you would need a relational database because that's how we relate information to each other. In contrast, you might be thinking, well, what about a non-relational database? Well, that's exactly what it sounds like as well. It's just a database that doesn't have any relationships with the data. So it's kind of like more of a, a mumble jumble sort of process compared to a relational, which has a lot of structure and rules and things that are related to each other. Now, at this point, we need to introduce a dear friend, which is SQL <laughs> into the picture because SQL has a very important part to play in relational databases. SQL stands for, as you can see, Structured Query Language. And that fits very well in with our relational model because we need a way of querying all of the data, which just means retrieving all of the data from a database. And SQL is the way that we do that. For example, if you wanted to find out all of our customers who start with the letter A, the best letter, then you would use SQL to be able to find that out. SQL can run on a bunch of different databases. If they're running a on-premise database, then they're probably using MySQL or Postgres SQL, which is the managed database services that we talked about before. And then they'd be using SQL to actually query those databases and get out the data that they need. Now there's a couple of relational databases that are available to us in AWS. And we're gonna start with the RDS, which is the Amazon Relational Database Service. So this is a great place to start. It's a classic, we've talked about it before, we're gonna talk about it again. RDS is a service that allows us to run relational databases on the cloud or in AWS. They automate the tasks that come with most databases if you build them on site, which is managing the hardware, doing patches or fixes to the database, setup and backup. This means that you don't have to worry so much about the admin of managing the database and you can just get straight into it. This is why we call this a managed database service. Many of Amazon's relational databases have encryption for when the data is just sitting in the database and also encryption for when the data is being sent or retrieved or going somewhere else. You can have all different types of databases within Amazon RDS. So for example, you could actually run a MySQL database in relational database services. You could do a Postgres SQL database. You could do an Amazon Aurora. We're getting a bit like meta here, databases on databases. But the point is, is that the relational database with Amazon is like the service and you can have multiple different types of databases that actually run on that service. Oracle is another one, the Maria database, the Microsoft SQL server. These are all compatible with Amazon relational database services. Next up, we have Amazon Aurora. There are a lot of benefits of Amazon Aurora. It's a really cool service. It's really targeted at enterprise level databases and is compatible with MySQL and Postgres SQL databases. This means that if your database was originally on MySQL or Postgres SQL, then you can seamlessly move it to Amazon Aurora with no trouble. It's five times faster than the standard MySQL database, which is a decent amount and up to three times faster than the Postgres SQL database. You would really want to consider Aurora if your database needs high availability because it's actually replicating a lot of your data across different availability zones, which are basically different geographic places around the world so that wherever you are or your users are, when they are trying to access data from that database, they don't have to all travel to the one database. They just go to the nearest availability zone to them and wow, there's a copy of your data. That's magical. That's so much faster than going all the way to the other side of the world to try and get your data. So that's why Aurora is so fast because it's making all of these copies in these different 
places around the world. It's also priced at one tenth of the cost of on-premise databases. So it's really, really cost efficient as well. Those are the two main relational databases that we're talking about today. We have the relational database service from Amazon. And then we also have the Amazon Aurora database service, which is very, very fast and designed for more enterprise level customers. So hopefully that was useful and you've learned some new stuff. Let's go to the next video.